Thank you for tuning into the Pictures of Lily podcast. I'm your host, Lily Moyeri. I've been a music journalist since 1992, and I interview a lot of music-related people. This podcast is about my experience behind the story, my experience doing the interviews, just to give you a snapshot of what it's like on the other side of the digital recorder. Pictures of Lily. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for tuning into the Pictures of Lily podcast and giving us 10 minutes of your time. Those of you who caught our last episode now know what goes on behind the scenes of this podcast. And those of you who don't know, you should check that episode out. As always, thanks to those of you who have subscribed or followed us on any of the podcast platforms. You can find us on every platform by going to picturesoflily.com. From there, you can connect to us on any platform, as well as on SoundCloud and on YouTube and now on Pandora. In this episode, I am going to be talking about my recent interview with Mike Skinner of The Streets for my first ever contribution to Spin. I'm not trying to pull you, even though I would like to. I think you are really fit, you're fit, but my gosh, don't you know it? Here are a few snapshots of my experience interviewing Mike Skinner of The Streets. I feel like The Streets were on everyone's radar when the first album, Original Pirate Material, was released in 2002, and everybody was really excited about them. Mike's lyrics and his music, which he produces himself, had a unique voice and sound that spoke to a lot of young people. While I was doing my research for our interview, I read an article in Interview Magazine that I felt really captured the essence of Mike and what he did with the streets. This is what the author, Richard Turley, said about him. His lyrical superpower was being able to articulate male vulnerability in a way that connected to a post-millennium audience bottle-fed by the bravado and swagger of American hip-hop and the druggy corporate club culture that Acid House had metastasized into. His was a hyper-intelligent voice, euphoric, critical, scattered, self-aware, fucked up, giddy on fame and fortune, and the fear of it all falling apart. That's it. Turn the page on the day, walk away. Cause there's sense in what I say. I'm 45th generation Roman, but I don't know him or care when I'm spitting. So return to your sitting position and listen, it's fitting. And I'm miles ahead in HA. The Streets released five albums in just under 10 years, and each one was just a little less exciting than the last one. Mike retired The Streets in 2012, mainly because he felt he was becoming unrelatable. And I feel like the whole thing became a distant memory. Now Mike has brought the streets back with what he's calling a mixtape. Really, it's a streets album with a different collaborator on every track. This is what Mike told me about calling it a mixtape. To come back after nine years and put out an album, that would have been insane. I had been doing a lot of collaborations. I wanted to say this is where I'm at now. The mixtape is like a bridge, a way of rounding out my life before coming back to the streets. I do wonder whether the mixtape is actually better than Serious Streets. It's not overplanned. It was all these things coming together in a really natural way. And I wonder whether when I get to the street stuff, whether it will be a bitch. There's less pressure on this. That's why we call it a mixtape. If it's rubbish, we can say, well, it's a mixtape. None of us are getting out of this life alive. None of us are getting out of this life alive. Four fathom five, my father lies. None of us are getting out of this life alive. I remember it was a big deal for UK rappers to have acceptance in the US hip hop community, since that was their inspiration. But I don't know that any UK rappers have had any US rapper level of success stateside. The thing is, I don't know that it matters to them as much anymore because they have such a big UK hip hop scene, which in itself has a lot of subgenres. Mike explained in detail about how UK artists have a lot of local rappers to look up to, and that's the path they set themselves on. But then he ended that thought by telling me he thinks UK rappers have given up on becoming successful in America. Take me as I am, right? Or watch me as I go. She said, take me as I am, or watch me as I go. I asked Mike if he was more careful about what he says in his songs after the hashtag MeToo and the hashtag Black Lives Matter movement. 
which have changed the creative landscape a lot since the streets were last heard from. This is what he told me about his perspective. What I said in my songs 20 years ago, something that would be offensive now, I can't let that rule my life. When it comes to the race stuff, that was my fight anyway. Black ownership, that's my cause. What tends to happen when you get cancelled is you find a new audience, which is probably not good for your brand. Apart from that, Donald Trump has proven that you can only get cancelled if you accept the cancellation. I know something you did, but I can't say now Because of, let's say, how I found out And that's my snapshot of my memorable experience interviewing Mike Skinner of The Streets, which was a lot more meaningful and thoughtful and coherent than when I interviewed him at the start of his career. You can find the full feature online at spin.com, and it is also linked at picturesoflily.com. As far as the mixtape, I actually think that his collaborators are amazing and possibly do a better job of it than he does himself. Taste the freaking lesson like the apple from the doctor. It's a wasted incident, but they take the Michael. Ooh, some people's only taste of actual success is when they take a bite from you. In the next episode, I'm going to talk about interviewing all five of the Go-Go's and Alison Elwood, the director of their Showtime documentary, which, as you can imagine, was definitely, I have to pinch myself to believe this is real experience for me. That interview was for Los Angeles Magazine. From myself and my co-producer, director, editor, Lawrence Schroeder, thanks for listening. And once again, if you haven't had a chance to subscribe or follow the podcast on any of the podcast platforms, please do so. And please rate and review. You can connect to us on picturesoflily.com and from there you can choose your preferred podcast platform or SoundCloud or YouTube or Pandora. You can also find the playlist for the podcast on Spotify and YouTube. Once again, thanks for listening. Pictures of Lily.